Welcome to Startup Health TV, where we celebrate the entrepreneurs and innovators who are transforming health. I'm your host, Logan Plaster, with my guest and friend, Shireen Abdullah, CEO and founder of Yumlish. Shireen, always good to catch up with you. As always, thank you so much, Logan, for this opportunity. I've always uh, appreciated hearing your updates and understanding what you're doing with Yumlish. I was on your website and I read an interesting statistic yes. that 78% of consumers report uh, re conflicting information about what to eat and what to avoid. Why is it so difficult for people to know yeah. what they should be eating? Yeah, I'll actually start that off with a, with a quick story of my own, Logan. So a few years ago, I was diagnosed with a chronic condition, turned to my doctor at the time, really tried to understand what I could do differently in my health. And I just remember my doctor at the time telling me, oh, just eat healthy. And it just came across like it was this obvious thing yeah. that I wasn't doing. And that really kind of hit me. And that ties back to the statistic that you just mentioned, because it is true. We're told constantly by doctors, people around us who mean well, who no doubt mean yeah. well, to eat healthy and how we need to eat better and do better. But if you think about it, you're never taught that. You're never, t is somehow your doctor just expects you to know these things, yeah. but no one ever teaches you. And so with that, when Yemlish was born, that's exactly what we focus on, is scaling nutrition literacy, yeah. right? And what that means is, how do I read a nutrition label? What's important for me to know on there? What oils should I buy when I go to the grocery store? How do I pick produce? Um, a lot of the, I, I was just gonna quickly say that the stat that you mentioned with the 78%, um, over half the population doesn't know the difference between what to eat and avoid, Crazy. right? And that's exactly it. It just drives back to exactly the cycle that we're stuck in. And we're told the best we're told is eat healthy. But what does that really mean for us isn't translated well. And there's this paradigm where on one end, you've got too little information. You've got a doctor who says eat healthy, yeah. not enough information. Yep. On the other side, you've got Google. You've yep. got too much information. Yep. So you could Google which oil should I buy. Yep all day, yeah. should I eat this cereal or that cereal, yeah. and who knows what you're going to get. Exactly. So how did Yumlish, how did you try to, you know, take a bite out of that, yeah. if you will, yeah. um, and bring better information to people? Yeah. We started simple. We said, what is the resource out there that knows the answer to that very question? It's a dietitian. This is a person that goes to school to learn exactly those things to coach you sure. on, but there is an immense shortfall in dietitians needed to address the demand. Any clinic you go to, anywhere you go, these dietitians are overworked, underpaid. A tech-enabled solution like ours was just needed in order to scale a dietitian. So we're not claiming that we have all the answers, but what we are claiming is that a dietitian knows better and that our solution helps scale that reach of a dietitian. How much of the solution is tech and how yeah. much of it is person? Yep. Um, the solution is really multi, sort of like multi-tiered in that way. We've got a content layer, we've got group coaching, and then one-on-one -on, -one on okay. top of that. So we try to do, we try to reduce as much of the dietitian's time by providing some of that sure, content of that cuts across Otherwise populations. Otherwise, it's not scalable. You get Otherwise, back to the it's original not exactly. problem, but the group, in, you know, issue is interesting. Um, I'm fascinated by the fact that you've worked with the Air Force. Yes. Uh, typically, if I think about nutrition, I just think about maybe somebody with type 2 diabetes, yes. so just your average individual. But working with the Air Force brought up sort of a different issue around nutrition. This yeah. idea, you've told me before, about uh, workforce readiness. Yes. What's the term you used? Yes, mission readiness. Mission readiness. 100%. So tell me how nutrition plays into mission readiness. Yep. I'll start out with a quick stat on that side. So 70% of youth between the ages of 17 to 24 doesn't even qualify for service. One of the top reasons is weight and obesity. We have a huge recruitment problem in our service in that we're just not able to meet the demands that is, that is needed to be able to backfill all the people that are retiring and the new entries that are, entrants that are needed. And so with that, we're in a, in a very constrained situation because we need to have a line of defense to the point that now obesity is a national security issue. Mm. It's just a very it's big wild. deal. Yeah. It is wild. And so when we're thinking out of, about obesity, we normally connect it to exactly to what you said, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, all of those other things. But for an 18-year-old, it is their first paycheck. That's what's on the line It's an there. economic issue. It is it's an a, economic issue. It's a safety, it's a security issue. Interesting. Okay. okay. So tell me about what it was like to work with the Air Force. It's, it's a, a unique type of client. What did you learn from that experience? Yeah, so it is a unique client, but one of the key things I think that we learned was it can be 
an 18-year-old recruit who's trying to get to their first job in the service, or it can be a person who has diabetes, who's on Medicaid, both of them have common questions. Like, how do I read the nutrition label? Yeah. What does the hidden sugar look like on it? Is this really healthy for me? What can I do differently? Those are the common things that bind us. And, and that's exactly what nutrition literacy is about, is answering those very important questions that are so important to people when they're making decisions uh, literally on a day-to-day -day basis. So basically you're saying it, just, it all comes down to the same building blocks. Same building that you blocks. you got to nail. It's Absolutely. just like how to have a life where you're thriving. you got to know what to eat, what not to eat. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. So you had the Air Force deal. What other projects are you working on that you're excited about? Yeah, one of our uh, big ones that we're working on right now is really growing and expanding via Medi-Cal in the California okay. market. Uh, that's our next sort of big one and really working with managed care plans there. How are you seeing the conversation shift? How are you seeing a greater you know, appetite for innovation within this type of nutrition care? Mm -hmm. I think time and again, one of the big things for us right now is this whole thing around food as medicine, yeah. right? And when we talk about food as medicine, we constantly talk about meal kits. We talk about getting groceries to the individual. You have to pair it with literacy, right? If I said, Logan, I'll get you all these books. Yeah. You don't know how to read it. Yeah. What, what are you going to do with these books, <laughs> right? We have to create a virtuous cycle. And that's where lit literacy plays such a huge role. All right, all right. And, and how is that part of the Yumlish platform? Yeah. Break it down. I get the idea of like group coaching with a nutritionist, but how is the literacy piece a part of it? 100%. So one is just a low literacy solution that we have. We've gone above and beyond to make sure that it does right. that. It is a low literacy solution. We've also made it um, low tech. But what I mean by low tech, it is tech enabled from our side, but low tech as in, there isn't a UI, an additional UI or an app that the person needs to download. We meet them where they are. We meet them on web and text, which is where they're spending most of their time. Is it challenging to prove your efficacy? Is, is nutrition, it's, it's a long tail sort of journey. Yeah. Uh, so how do you go about proving that to a potential funder? Yeah. Yeah, so the big things for us there are the clinical outcomes. We've been able to prove it. In fact, American Diabetes Association ran uh, surveys with our participants, and they showed on there how we're engaging 89% of participants that come through our platform stay with us nine months or more. Okay. Right? Uh, that's so on the engagement, engagement front. Strong, yeah. Engagement is strong. We're seeing weight loss. We're seeing um, A1C drop. I mean, okay. there's just time and again we're proving it out. It's not about the next app. It's about meeting them where they are which is web and text. Interesting. Oh, it's just interesting to hear that. Hear you say that because I have so many conversations with companies that are dialed into the data, but if you don't understand your own nutrition, you can't even get to the good data, then it's garbage in and garbage out. 100%. When, uh, you know, sometimes even we'll, we'll get some folks uh, to the conversation and they'll say, oh yeah, what device does this connect to? Yeah. And already I know that that's not yeah. the best conversation to have because if you're leading with technology and what's flashy and fancy out there. Does it connect there, to your uh, Apple Watch? You does know, it connect? Absolutely. You're like not the first question. When you're not, not the first question. Absolutely. And that's just it. If you're leading the conversation with technology, you're leaving opportunity on the table. Mm. You have to lead with what does this person want and what's important to them. They don't want something flashy. The questions we get is how do I make sure that my kid doesn't get diabetes? Yeah. Right? You have to start by answering that question. All of the other stuff, the bells and whistles can be added on. That's yeah. not a problem. That's never been a problem. The problem is how do you meet them where they are and create trust with them in a manner that's most respectful to their background mm. and that aligns with how they understand technology. What's one strategy you've employed for creating trust? Yeah. One of the biggest things for us is uh, our culturally competent programs. So we'll hear participants who come to our program say, my doctor told me I can't have tortillas anymore. Okay. All right, let's start there. Yeah. You can absolutely have your tortillas. Nothing wrong with that. Let's try to figure out if it's a quantity issue. Yeah. Let's work through that. Right? Interesting. And that's how we start that trust. Awesome. Shireen, love having you in to the studio to get an update. Appreciate how you're, you're working on this issue. Um, the whole, you know, military readiness piece is so fascinating and um, appreciate that you're sort of thinking about nutrition on this sort of multifactorial uh, sort of layer. Thank so, you as always, Logan. It's such a pleasure. Thank All you. Right. Take care.